Amen. Right. He's still God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, he's still God. Yes, sir. He's still God. He, he, he doesn't need us to be who he is. We need him yeah. to be who we are. Yeah. And this is why we must cling to him. When you realize who he is to you, when you realize what you can't do without him, then you will learn how to grab onto him and hold on to him. You, you'll learn how to grab onto him and not let him go. When you understand that the reason my eyes opened up this morning was because he saw fit to touch my life. When you understand that the reason why my heart continued to pump through the night was because he touched my life. When you understand that, when you understand that while you were sleeping, that there was somebody who died last night, that there was somebody who house got broke in last night, somebody car got broke in. While you were sleeping, there was some stuff going on. In your neighborhood, but God watched over you. God shielded you. God protected you. Amen. And they went over there, and they went over there, but they did not come into your house because the angels of the Lord are encamping about those who fear him. He don't need me. I need him. Yes. I need him. I need him. Yes. I need him. Yes. I need him. Yes. When you realize that everywhere you go, there is sickness and disease everywhere you go. When you realize when you go to the different places, you go to work, sometimes you may rub your head across the counter. You don't know what disease, what bacteria. You don't know what fungus was on that counter. You don't know what germ was on that counter that you just rubbed your head across. And yet you're still here. Yet God has watched over you. Yet God has protected you. You don't know what you come in danger and come in contact with. Both danger seen and unseen. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Dangers seen and unseen. Yes. There's some stuff that he has protected me from that I didn't even know it was there to kill me. Amen. Right. There was some stuff that he provided protection for and I didn't even know it was there. Yes. There were some people that would have took you out. You ain't, you ain't even see them because God took them away. He hid them from them. A battle you ain't even have to fight because God watched out for you. Just think about all of the different times you have walked through the um, the parking lot of, of, of a, a grocery store or mall and you looking at your phone, you talking about this and talking about that, not aware of your surrounding. You don't know who's watching you. You don't know who looking at you, what they got on their mind, and yet you get to your car, get in your car, drive off, and then you hear on the news that somebody was trying to do the same thing, wasn't bothering nobody, wasn't messing with nobody, just trying to go from point A to point B and never make it there, but here you are. You were able to go and do what you needed to do and God watched over you. God kept you because he loves you. Yeah. He don't, he, we need him. Yeah. He, don't, he don't need us. Wow. We need him. Yeah. The Bible says the very atmosphere is evil. The very atmosphere that you, that you, that you breathe. Germs in the air. Disease in the air. Sickness in the air. How do you think you get cold? It's in the air. But yet God watches over. He covers us. He protects us. This is what the Bible says. He says to the man that will not trust in Christ, he says that man is already condemned. That woman is already condemned. They have already been judged. Not only have they been judged, but God has already passed a sentence over their life. And the only thing that can deliver them from that judgment and that sentence is the blood of Jesus. He said, I didn't come, I didn't send my son to condemn you. He said, I sent my son to save you. He said, I came down here that you may have life and that more abundantly. But whether or not you have that abundant life is whether or not you come to him as your savior. And if you refuse him as your savior, then the judgment has already been declared over your life. And it's just a point of time, a matter of time, before you receive your just payment. Because everything that's coming, you deserve it. Everything that's coming, you deserve it. And the only thing that delivers us is the love of God. Because I was guilty. I deserve my punishment. All the lies I don't told, all the stuff I don't stole, all the things that I don't done that I ain't have no business doing, I was I, I deserve the punishment. Ain't no question about that. But it was the grace of God and the love of God that has delivered me from what I just did deserve. Amen. Right. Come on, let's move a little further here. Talking Amen. about walking. In the light. Go down to verse number 19. This is my focus verse. Verse number 19 says, and this is the condemnation. 
This is the condemnation. This is the thing that brings them under condemnation. This is the problem that God has with those who don't believe. This is their condemnation. This is the problem. This is the smoking gun. This is the thing that God is upset about. This is why God has pronounced judgment. This is the issue that God has with the unbeliever. He says, and this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world. He says, this is the problem. This is Christ talking. And he says, this is the problem that God has. This is why condemnation are on, is on their life. He says, the problem that God has with humanity is that the light has come. If the light had not come, then you would have been okay. You would have been able to say, I didn't know. You would have been able to say, I, I, it wasn't my fault. But he said, the reason why there is no excuses and the reason why there is no getting out of this is because the light has come. He says, the reason why the people are in trouble is because light has come into the world. Now, when we talk about the light, we're talking about Christ and we're talking about the word and the teaching of Christ. When we talk about the light that has come, we're talking about Jesus and we're talking about the teachings of Jesus. And the Bible says that when this light comes, that nobody has any excuses now because the light has come. Now, let's deal with this. When the light comes, one of the things that light provides is that light determines that there is a right and a wrong. Now see, if the light didn't come, then you could say, I don't know from right from wrong if there was no light. But when the light comes, you have no excuse because light reveals to us what is right and what is wrong. And so we are not ignorant of the will of God. We are not ignorant of the word of God because the light of God has shown us the right way to go. Amen. Now, if I choose to go the wrong way, it's not because I did not know because light has come. God said, this is the condemnation. This is the problem that I have with you. The problem that I have with you is because you know the way. You know the way. You know that that's wrong. You know that you're not supposed to do that. You know that you shouldn't touch that. You know. The problem that I have with you, Corey, is that light has come. You know. Let, let, me, let me give you some scripture. Let me give you some scripture. Let's go, let's go to Romans the 7th chapter. Romans the 7th chapter. Walking in the light. Walking in the light. Romans 7, chapter, verse number 7. Let me read it for you. Verse number 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I have not known sin, but by the law. For when I had not known lust, except the law has said, thou shalt not covet. He says, listen, the law is nothing, ain't nothing wrong with the law. He says, the law has revealed to me what I'm not supposed to do. He said, I didn't know covenant, covenant was an issue until the law told me thou shalt not covet. I just thought it was just a, not, a, not, a, a part of life. I just thought that it was a part of being human to desire things, to covet and want things. He said, that's a natural emotion, that's a natural feeling, that's a part of life. But the word showed me that that is wrong. Now I don't have any excuses. See, the light provides direction. The light tells me what's right and what's wrong. And God says the problem that we have is that you know because my word has shown you what you should do, what you should do. So there is no excuse. You choose to go in the opposite direction. And that's the condemnation. That light has come. Light has come. Light for your, for your life has come. The way you should live your life, it has come. You have the light. You know what you should do. You know what you should not do. You know where you should be, where you should not be. You, the light has come. You are not ignorant of the will of God. He says the condemnation that I have is that you know light has come. Light 
has come. I've, 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 I've shown you, I've told you that this is the way I want you to do it. This is what you should do. This is what you should not do. Light has come. The condemnation is, is that I chose to go opposite of what I knew I was supposed to do. So Paul says, ain't nothing wrong with the law. He says, the word of God is what showed me and what told me that what I was feeling was wrong. Now, I'm not here, listen to this, I'm not here to argue with you about whether or not you fit it. I'm not here to argue with you about whether or not you desire. I'm not here to argue with you about whether or not you want to do it. You may want to do it, but just because you want to do it don't mean you don't know that you ain't got no business doing. And so you must choose to walk in the light rather than walk in your feelings. God did not say that all of his word is going to make you feel good. God did not say that all of his word is going to make you smile. God did not say that all of his word is going to make you feel like a queen or king, but what it did say is that my word is to be obeyed. And so regardless of whether you will like it or agree with it or comfortable with it or whether it's easy to swallow has nothing to do with the fact that it is the light of God's word and that you need to, as a child of God, walk in the word. Amen. Walk in the light. Yes. Because you know that it is the light. Okay. Let me show you something. Let's go to the book of Mark 9 and 43. I want to deal with my I want to deal with my feelings. I want to deal with the feelings because sometimes sometimes we we get sidetracked because of our feelings. I talked about this a little bit in Bible study. Our feelings get us in trouble. Sometimes our feelings want to do stuff that we shouldn't be doing. And nobody can question. And I will never try to question how you feel. Because the reality is that how you feel is really not important. How I feel is really not important. Okay, let me, let me change this around a little bit because some of y'all looking at me. Let me change this around and present it to you a different way. As a parent, you have rules in your house because it's your house. And you're not really concerned as a parent whether or not your 10-year-old child likes your rules. Can I get an amen from the parents? Amen. amen. So as a parent, you're not really concerned about whether or not your 10 year old likes the fact that they, need to, they have to go to bed at eight o'clock. It, it really doesn't matter to me whether you would like, whether you agree with that or not, because as a parent, you have the right to set the rules in the house. Amen. And that child has the knowledge or the light of your rules. And now if that child rebels against that rule or, or refuses to walk in that light, then you're gonna initiate some type of punishment. Amen. Because there are consequences to walking outside of your light. Because as the parent, you get the right to, uh, to declare what the rules or what the light is in your house. So when we take that same mindset and look at God and look at us as the children of God, and we understand that God, because he is my creator, now if I made myself, then I don't have to listen to God. If I woke myself up, I don't have to listen to God. If I, burp, if I make my own heart pump and my lungs breathe out, then I don't have to listen to God. But if I need God to make my heart pump blood and my lungs breathe oxygen and make my eyes open, if I need God to give me life, then God has every right to tell me how to live. Yes, yes. If he is the author of the life, author meaning creator, originator, it comes from him. If he's the author, then he has every right to tell me how to live the life he gave me. Yes. I'm trying to help somebody. Yes. And so when we understand it like that, it's not about how you feel. The only question you need to answer is, is this what he said? That's the only question you need to answer. Is this 
what he said. And if the answer to that is yes, then regardless of how you feel, what you think, you need to fall in line with whatever he said. Because he, as your creator, has every right to tell you how to live your life. Now, me as a preacher, as a pastor, I don't have no right to tell you how to live your life. I cannot tell you how to govern your life, and that's why I don't try. But what I do tell you is what thus said the Lord, Amen. because I'm speaking on his behalf, and I'm telling you what your creator said. Now, you can reject my word, but it's really not my word you reject it. It's the word Tell you what he said. This is what he said. This is the light that he has provided for you. This is what light has, he, that he has provided for me. The same thing I preach to you, I have to live by. Amen. Right. Thou shalt not steal for you, is thou shalt not steal for me too. Right. Thou shalt not lie for you, is thou shalt not lie for me. It's the same light. The same light that I preach is the same light that I have to walk in. Right. Well, I told y'all to, to go to Mark 9. Mm -hmm. 43, y'all have that? Read that, please. Ain't no God hand up in thee. Cut it off. Cut it off. There is better for thee to enter into life a man that have two hands and go to hell. I want to fire and never shall be. I want to take away all your excuses for not walking in the light. That's the title of our message, walking in the light. The Bible says if you got an issue in your body, because there are some issues in our bodies. And some of them are not easy to get rid of. God said it's better for you to cut your hand off and go man to heaven than to keep both of your hands and go to hell fighting. What he's telling you is not telling you to cut your hand off. He's trying to give you an example, trying to give you some understanding. That just because something is a desire and a feeling and it's what you want to do, he says you still don't do it because you understand that there is a judgment connected to walking outside of the light. And so he says it's better for you to do what you need to do to get you in line and go to heaven than, call, than allow that issue to cause you to go to hell. Amen. Don't let your feelings, don't let your flesh cause you to go to hell. Don't let unforgiveness cause you to go to hell. Don't let how you feel about what somebody said to you or did to you cause you to go to hell. You better learn how to forgive. You better learn how to dump that bucket out. Some of us walking around with buckets full of filth of garbage. We are bitter. We are angry. We are un we are upset. We got buckets of garbage and it's killing us. You better learn how to dump that bucket out or it's going to ruin your life. Amen. Tell you what I know. I have to dump my own buckets. Because it's much easier to tote the bucket than it is to dump it. It's always easier to tote that bucket than to dump it. You mean I got to let it go and you never said I'm sorry? I got to let it go and he ain't changed. I got to let it go and he's still doing the same thing. I got to dump it off. No.